agree with Joey in just a minute. What would you do if people on Sunday morning ran into your church, started screaming, holding posters, making a ruckus, maybe getting too close to the children, running up on the altar, attacking the priest? What would you do? Are you ready? Is there a plan? Today, I invited my good friend Joey Olivo on. He is, uh, in many ways, I think, an expert. He probably wouldn't say that, but I would say he's an expert on church security, preparedness, defense. Um, and we're going to go through five, maybe even more tips, plans on how to secure your church, how to make sure it's a safe place. Of course, the police are always necessary. We're not you know, talking about being vigilantes here. But how can you make sure that, A, this is never going to happen to your church. B, if it does, there is a plan and that people will be safe. That's what we're going to discuss today. I think you'll be very interested. And I think we're going to give you some resources and some tools so that you can begin to put these practices into place in your church with your pastor and your priest's cooperation. Joey, welcome on. Uh, thank you for having me, Taylor. Well, I'm sure, Joey, you know, we talked about it before, and you've seen some of the things going on uh, that have happened over the weekend. Uh, there was the Roof Sent Us crowd, which I think is really Satan Sent Us. Uh, they said, we're going to come into your churches. Here, I'm going to put the tweet on the screen. I'm going to make it big. You won't see it, Joey. But here's what Roof Sent Us put. They said, stuff your rosaries and your weaponized prayer. We will remain outraged after this weekend, so keep praying. We'll be burning the Eucharist to show our disgust for the abuse Catholic churches have condoned for centuries. Burning the Eucharist. Now, how do they get the Eucharist? Well, that means they have to steal the Eucharist, either by communion on the hand or by actually stealing a tabernacle. Joey, did you see what happened in Katy, Texas? You there, Joey? Oh, I lost Joey. We'll wait just a minute and hopefully he'll be back. You with I can me? Hear you, Taylor. you with me? I can hear I can hear you. Okay, I lost you for yeah, a second. Yeah, it, it got a little choppy there for a second, but I can hear you fine. Okay. Did you see what happened in Katy, Texas? I did. I did see yeah. that. Yeah. Here's here's from uh the priest, Father Christopher Plant. Our tabernacle was stolen last night. This is over the weekend. Our tabernacle was stolen last night. We don't know who did it, but the police are investigating. Please pray for us and those who committed this criminal sacrilege. If you have any information that can help in the investigation, please call our office with the phone number. Uh, there's got to be ways that we can prevent this. Joey, you're going to share some things. You know, I did a poll before we went live and only 65 or 35 percent of the people watching today's show said there's a security team or police presence at church. That's that's got to change. And we're going to go over it today. I mean, more stuff happened. I got stuff on the screen. People spray painting my body, my choice on churches. We had the uh, break in, the invasion in the mass in Los Angeles. Did you see that one? I did see that one as well. I mean, at least those handmaidens were wearing veils on their head. That's all I got to say. <laughs> otherwise, everything. <laughs> otherwise, the one thing they did right. <laughs> everything. Yeah, everything else was, was horrific. Then there was uh, this. This is up in Michigan. This was a uh, St. Pius X Church, St. Joseph's. Uh, they wrote all kinds of disgusting, foul stuff all over that church over the weekend. Then there were these valiant young men who were praying outside the doors of their church with this crazy woman. I'm going to try to show the clip without the crazy woman. Let me just try here. Because I just want to show you how solid these guys are. We need to thank them. Ah! Oh, no. Here's the crazy woman. Got to get her off the screen. Here we go. Just the guys praying the rosary. We pray in the St. Michael's prayer. Mysteries of the most holy rosary of the blessed Virgin These guys are great. That we imitate what they contain and obtain what they want toward us. Everyone's shouting at them going crazy there's this crazy woman doing this live action cosplay a word nonsense horrible absolutely horrible all right joey what's the solution 
The solution is, is the men need to step up and start taking action. That's, that's the only solution to this because we're not going to always be able to rely on local law enforcement to be there right when you need them. Um, so in the video with Los, in Los Angeles at the cathedral there, you did see there was about two or three men that jumped up and they were ready to take action. That's great, but there should have been more. Yeah. There should have been a blockade of men preventing these women from getting up the aisle up towards the altar. And they, I noticed they had a big sign with them. You know, that, that should have never even gone up as far as it did. And, and the crazy thing is, is that the one person who took action to actually get them out of the church was a woman usher, at least it looked like a woman usher to me. You know, she was the one that was like, okay, I've had enough of this. You guys are, I'm getting you guys out of here. Yeah. And she took action. And, then, and we need more of that. We need a lot more of that. Now, one thing I noticed during the election cycle with the anti-FA people is uh, they often put women into the action, knowing that conservative men like you and me are not going to just reach out and lay hands and grab a a woman. And that's kind of what we saw in, in Los Angeles over the weekend is they didn't put in a bunch of guys. They put in these women dressed up in these costumes, the role play. Um, I guess we're going to get into some of these scenarios in a little bit, aren't we? Yes, we're going to cover a, a various different scenarios that, uh, that, you, that you have to deal with as a, a safety person on a, right. uh, on a safety team. Okay. You know, I wonder if, if, if you were a pro life person, you're a Catholic, you believe life begins in, at conception, abortion's a mortal sin. Are you going to be convinced when a bunch of Karens come in LARPing like a, like a TV show? into your mask, like that's going to make you pro-choice. You're going to be like, wow, Roe v. Wade, I need to look into that. <laughs> I don't get it. Definitely, I don't, definitely not on my I, I don't get it. Uh, I think this is just demonic outrage and they don't know what to do. They just don't know Absolutely. what to do. Now, Absolutely. you have basically a five-point checklist here or tip list um, centering on the role of teams. You call them teams. Why do we need a team? It takes why not just have a bunch effort. of guys? Yeah, it takes a concerted effort of trained individuals to work together to make the parish safe, um, especially with regards to like the uh, traditional community. So the community I'm with, I, I transit 45 minutes to mass on Sundays and holy days. So if something were to happen, I can't be there in five minutes to go protect father. You know, I have to have a group of men that can work together in unison for a common purpose to protect our parish, to protect our, our, our beliefs and to protect our God and the tabernacle most of yeah. all. Um, so there, there's a, uh, it has to be a team effort. Good. Okay. So I think everybody's convinced. Why do you need a team? How do you organize a team? It's kind of, I mean, for some guys, it's going to be a little scary. I can see some priests saying, I don't know. Maybe bishops are like, is this a good idea? Is this vigilante? So uh, why, why a team? And then how do, you, how do you get this started? What do you do to organize? Yeah, so um, there, there's, I've, I've broken it down into about five, five different areas that, that, where it, that it takes to get a safety team. To, and, and the why to it is not just, you know, dealing with the a people it's not just dealing with the people that are after other persecutors it's also dealing with let's say natural disasters met um let's say that there is a, a fire threat uh, criminal activity just your your local vagrants um and then of course in the extreme circumstances you know you have your um a riot or you know uh, people trying to literally burn your church to the ground um so you know to the pastors out there i would argue you know there is a risk, inherent risk, of your parishioners being hurt. And there could be re repercussions as far as legal issues if you have 35 hurt parishioners and they go, well, you know, hey, you know, I feel like I wasn't safe. There wasn't like a protocol. Everything was, it was chaos. It was, you know, we didn't know what to do and, you know, we got trampled. Those are the risks that you run by not having an organized team that can get things done effectively, working in unison, communicating with each other in real time um, to, to, 
to handle a situation that can pop up. So there, there is definitely a liability issue with regards to um, not having a group of men more than just ushers, I'd argue, more than just ushers. And now our, our team personally, that my team, um, the safety team guys are both. We are both ushers and safety team, whereas some of our ushers are very old and they, they, they don't exactly make a great safety team member. You know, if anything, in the event something happened, they'd probably be more in the way um, of us getting, you know, getting the situation handled. So, um, you know, those are some of the things you, you, I, if I was a pastor, I would definitely look at and consider when trying to make a decision if you want to have um, um, have a safety team at your church, you know, and and with that. You have to, you know, for anybody who's thinking about starting a safety team, it starts with your pastor. Our pastor is our shepherd. Our pastor is the, he is the end all of everything that we do on our team is cleared by our pastor. Yeah. He is the, so he key. is the one that, yes, he, he is, he is the, he is the, he is the head honcho. Whatever he says goes. Um, and so your hierarchy, so you have to have a hierarchy. Your hierarchy is going to consist, obviously, like I said, like I just said, the pastor, but your next guy is going to be your head of security. Um, and that guy is going to be the one who's going to give the marching orders. He's the one that's going to make the schedules. He's the one that's going to, you know, communicate with the team. Um, he usually has a deputy, um, which would be an assistant head of security at our parish. We call it the director of operations. That's what I am at my parish. And, um, you know, then after that, it filters down to your shift leads. Your shift leader is somebody. So for the seven, eight, 30, 11, there's one guy that coordinates everything. If somebody has to go to the restroom real quick, he goes and he, you know, hey, I need you to move here. I need you to move there. So that way, all of the most key positions in the church are covered at, at, a, at all times. And then you have your team members. Your team members are the guys who are going to be posted up in certain tactical strategic locations. So in the event of a fire or a medical emergency, they can respond quickly. Um, so then there's a little bit of a silent uh, member of the team. We, we, we have patron saints. Ours is uh, St. James. Um, so we, a lot of our safety team guys, you'll see them wearing the St. James uh, cross on their, on their lapels. Um, so, you know, they're, identi we're identifiable. So that's, uh, I, I think that's a very important access to make sure you have a patron saint as well. Um, going into the next section is. Well, let me just ask uh, some mm -hmm. things that maybe th people are thinking. So what if you get together? I think it'd probably be good to, you know, when, when you're with some some buddies, you know, you're working on the parish grounds or you're having, you know, cigar night or whatever. You talk this up. You go to the pastor. Pastor says, no, nah, I don't want that. That's that's dumb or that's not safe. or I don't like that. Then what? Well, I mean, this is my personal opinion is yep. give your personal you opinion because I'm about to get mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> so my personal opinion is, and I, I've told my family this many times, you know, there is nobody in this world that I trust more than myself to protect and to look over my family and their safety. So if something happens, not President Biden, I have, no, not definitely not President <laughs> Biden. I mean, the guy can't even get a sentence straight. So, right. you know, <laughs> but, you know. If something happens, I am going to do something. It, it's in my nature. I'm an ex-military guy. We have some ex-military guys on our team. You know, it's in our nature to be defenders. It's in our nature to want to help somebody who's in trouble. And um, so you need to make that decision. You need to make a conscious decision. Look, if something ever happens, I'm going to do something. And when you get that mentality in your mind, if something happens, you will act. So if it was me, I would get together with a bunch of my brothers and be like, hey, something ever happens, you know, I'm going to be sitting here. I'm going to sit on the end of the aisle. And we'll get more into that later. You know, if something happens. I'm going to take action. I'm going to do something. And I, I want you to have my back. OK, great. I got your back. You got my back. And uh, so that's that's the mentality that I would take into it and, and just be ready to do something. I was going to go one beyond you, Joey. I was going to say find a new church. <laughs> Absolutely. You I mean, know, I, I, I would try to be persuasive with the pastor, but if it's just, hey, if the pastor's position is, I want myself, the priest, the Eucharist and the tabernacle, and all the women and children in here to be sitting ducks 52 Sundays a year. Because, I mean, I, I, when I was a young man, my baseball coach was a Methodist minister. 
And one day, a crazy man came into that Methodist, my coach's church, and shot a bunch of people. It's horrific. Totally sad. Uh, no one saw that coming. I mean, this was a long time ago. I'm an older guy. Uh, and that was happening. Then it's happening more now. We actually have explicit threats on our community. So I just don't see how I would be comfortable being a member or constantly attending a mass where there was nothing in place. Nothing. I would just have yeah, to ab leave. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you one thing, and this is uh, one of, okay, so I'm, I'm a veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. So I've, you know, I've been overseas. I've been in, you know, dangerous parts of the world. So having situational awareness is a very big part of my life. It, 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 it never leaves you. And uh, the first time I ever visited my traditional parish, the very first thing that I saw when I walked in the door, guy, jacket on, good squared away haircut, shined up boots, earpiece in. And I'm like, wow, that guy is, I would not want to test that guy there. Yeah. I turn the corner, I walk into the church and what do I see? Suit, earpiece, shine shoes. And I was like, all right, I like this. And you said, I'm safe here. And exactly. I said, yeah. I'm safe here. You know, I mean, I mean, when you think about it, when you're at mass, you're kneeling and you are in a vulnerable position. And the That's, priest in the traditional Latin mass has his back to the people yes. with his face to the crucifix. He's vulnerable too. Absolutely. He should, you know, he a is priest the, should be wanting, because let's be honest, the number one target is most likely going to be on the altar with the priest. That's right. That's going to be, and when we saw that was in uh, Nice, France, the uh, yep. that was the target. He could have he could have gone after a number of people. He could have gone in and done a mass shooting. He didn't do that. He went after the priest. He wanted the, he wanted he wanted the man of the cloth. Yeah. And you know you have to strike the shepherd, as they say, you know, and uh, in order to scatter the sheep, you know. So you know, my first visit there, it was just like guy after guy after guy, and, and these guys, and I saw them walking up and down the aisles during mass, and I was like. I'm just going to put my head down. I'm going to enjoy this experience. Yeah. And uh, I felt 100% totally safe. And if you were someone who was maybe considering starting a ruckus or a problem at that church and you walked in and you saw that guy with the shine shoes and the clear, you know, and the earpiece, and, and then you saw another, you said, maybe this is not where I want to start a problem. Exactly. Yeah. You, you don't want to be a soft target yes you want to be a hard target that's that's the number one method of prevention for something um any sort of uh of issue within your church is to be a hard target it's impenetrable it needs to be layers of security and we'll get into that here in just a moment you know you know you know my, my buddy tb you know that's that's a guy you don't want to exactly you know you don't want to test that guy he is he is a brick wall and he will do whatever it takes to make sure that everybody's safe. And, and that's, that's, that's a great thing to have. Yeah. That's fantastic. So uh, real quick, I just want to tell everybody like this video, give it a like absolutely. people need to see this. This is, I don't know where you can get this information anywhere else. Joy you know, has Taylor, the experience. So please we, like it, please share forgot. it. <laughs> I don't think YouTube's going to spread this far and wide. So y'all have to be our algorithm, hit the share button, share it on Facebook. And if you're new, please do subscribe Hit the subscribe button and the bell. And while I'm discussing that in the show notes below is another YouTube channel uh, that men from our parish, Joey, others have prepared videos. It's called Marshall. What is it again? Marshall Tactical Defense. And that's not named after me. It's Marshall, M-A-R-T-I-A-L. <laughs> Marshall as in war. Um, so check that out. Right. Go to their web channel. And then I'm also at the end of the show going to share an email address for you to get. If you're a guy and you're like, I need resources, I need to start this. We're going to tell you how you can be in contact with these guys and get started. Okay, so so far we've talked about why you need a team, how to organize a team, how to work with a pastor, and ultimately you might have to convince the pastor. Yes, you know, and yeah, you I think that's possible, you guys. You always got it with your pastors, whether it's liturgical abuse, something strange going on. Anything like complaints, the sound system, the cry room, security, you always need to be respectful of the priest. He hears all kinds of complaints all the time. Uh, it helps if you're friendly to, to, towards him and you already have a relationship. So 
you need to build a relationship and be persuasive. Um, yeah, just a little commercial yeah, having, for being having, kind of priests. A, yes, having a good relationship with the pastor is absolutely paramount. I mean, it's the it, the the team will not function properly without it. It's a, it'll be chaos. And uh, you know, fortunately for me, you know, uh, my my pastor is a very logistical guy. He and uh, he he can put things together. He's like a, a I would never want to play chess with him because he would probably beat me in three or four moves. <laughs> he's 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 fantastic. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, uh, uh, real quick, Taylor, I know uh, we wanted me to say a prayer before we uh, continue on. Oh yeah, we got we got so excited, and I don't do interviews as much anymore <laughs> that I I totally got off the monologue transcript, and we didn't do the Our Father. So yes, we will pray. Please join us in praying the Our Father. Oremus nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And we pray for the security of all of our parishes and our priests and the Eucharist and our children. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum, quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amado. Amen. Nomini Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. St. James, right. pray for us. Pray for us. Yes. So uh, going forward with the next section is uh, the organization of your team is who is going to be on your safety team. And uh, this is how ours is set up. Um, so for us, we have a police officer. Um, fortunately, he's a faithful Catholic, uh, so he's he's there every Sunday. We have other police officers that attend our parish, retired police officers. Um, so those are the guys you want to have because they're like you want that officer. shiny police car parked right out front. Yes, and you will see prevention. that in our parish prevention. Exactly, yeah. it's a hard target. You don't yeah. want to pull in there and be like, okay, I have to deal with a police officer as soon as I'm on the property. Um, my number two would be uh, guys that served in the military. You know, these guys, especially my generation of military guys, most of us ended up serving overseas in some capacity. You know, so even even a guy that was working the desk, you know, he 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 knew how to take care of business as well. If things ever got crazy. Um, and then uh, you're going to want to have a layman who are willing to stand up and do something. Um, that's going to consist of the, probably the bulk of your team, and then. You need a network within your, you need to know your parishioners. So for us, the most, probably one, if anything, the most important, because the most common thing we deal with is trained medical professionals. Mm. They, we know where they are. Uh, check in with us. Uh, one of my good friends, DC, we actually served in the, we actually were on the same aircraft carrier back in 2001. Didn't know each other. She was a guy but now here we are all these years later and uh, we're on the on the safety team together but uh yeah so uh you know th that's going to be a big key part of it and uh then we also safety team they are undercover eyes so we have women that actually they they see things and they'll just walk up to us and be like hey you know just so just so you know i saw this or i saw that hey thank you i appreciate it because our eyes can't be everywhere we are i know our campus is big so we're, we can't even with four four guys on duty, we can't cover every single square inch, you know. So that's a uh, uh, so that's an organization your team and uh, the other big part of it is going to be participation amongst all the members who are who've agreed to be on the team. You need to have guys that are willing to serve, and for us, it's once a month, you know, because what that does is going to prevent burnout. You know, I've personally i've served almost every sunday for almost four years now you know I've, you know there's yeah. been times i've gone on vacation and i see you up there i mean you're there have been able out to early and late i mean it's a yes. chunk of time it is it is a chunk of time there is some dedication that's required for it there's sacrifice even for my wife you know i have three younger kids i have my two older kids as well but i have my three younger kids and she she's making a personal sacrifice as well because i'm not there in the pew with them to kind of be like hey you know alex i need you to calm down you know right. she doesn't get that she doesn't have that backup you know of course i can always shot, you know shoot a look over at him and just kind of <laughs> give him the give him the squint and he'll be like oh okay i need right. to, i need to stop i need to cut it out so <laughs> but you know um so you know, those, those, those are the most important things. And, you know, you need to be able to, you know, have safety features within your safety team. So for us, having safe environment uh, training is, is a big part of it. Passing a background check is a, uh, is a big part of it. Um, being in good standing with the church, being a man of solid faith. 
Right. That, that's 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 probably a, one of the biggest aspects of it as well. Um, yeah, probably they, some macho really, guy who comes in who you never known doesn't need to be your first round pick for your security team. These need to be guys who are present. You see him in the confession line. You see him at mass. You see him at feast days. You know they're carrying the statue of the Blessed Mother on a procession, like the men of faith who are active. Exactly. Um, and then on top of that, you know, they need to be mentally, physically and spiritually fit. You know, that's uh, you know, if, if if you're out of shape, chances are if you're if you're let's say you come into an extreme circumstance, you know, you could end up having a heart attack, you know, because you're not in proper shape. And you're, if you're not used to that adrenaline, you know, you could put yourself into some sort of shock where you actually end up becoming a liability. So making sure that you're in shape, you know, and one of the, uh, um, I'll just call him J.A. on our team, you know, he puts out a, a monthly workout challenge for our guys, you know, cool. do X amount of burpees, X amount of pushups and sit-ups. So, you know, to, you know, to have that, uh, you know, to have that, that, uh, that, that, per, that physical preparedness for any situation, you know, it's not just a, a violent situation, a stressful situation that somebody has a heart attack or something that's going to put a lot of stress on you and you have to be able to deal with it. Um, that's so an that important detail much- too. You know, we're not just talking about people invading the church or protesters or violence. Another element of this is, and I've been, we've all been to masses where someone falls over or a heart attack. You don't always know what happened, but I mean, there's medical emergencies that happen during mass. You need to have a security team for this. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then uh, the next section we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to try and cover here a little bit is gonna be like the supplies, like the basic supplies that you need as a safety team. What do you okay. need to respond to something? So those things are gonna consist of a comprehensive medical kit, something that's gonna have bandages, gauze, wraps, ice packs, tourniquet, trauma pads, uh, quick clot, uh, puncture wound seals. So those are those are. Big things. And EpiPen? Then, you, know, you think EpiPen, exactly. That's that's another big one. Um, face shield, you know, those A people, you know, if they if they if they on some off chance showed up, they like to utilize sprays and things of that nature or their bodily fluids from their mouth. I mean, that you don't want that getting in your face. I mean, you can look at these people and tell that I definitely want they wouldn't want their saliva on me, you know. No. Um, ha- having an AED that works, you know, and having somebody A assigned what? to make an AED for a heart attack. Oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yep. it'll give it'll give a person a shock to get their heart going again. Um, and then the most critical things for us are radios. We have a two way radio. Um, we have our uh, our actual earpieces here. I, got, I actually brought some of the stuff so I can show the the people out there. We have our earpieces. I got to tell you something. Goes right inside as a head. as a Catholic layman, you see those earpieces. Yes, you have the lapel pins on with the St. James cross, but I'm telling you what you look around and you see earpiece, earpiece, earpiece. Mm-hmm. You go, you know, take your child to the bathroom. There's a guy out in the hall, earpiece. The earpiece is yep. very, I mean, if I were like a dangerous villain, I would, and I walked into our church, I would not want to mess around because the earpieces. Yeah. The, yeah. The earpieces. And then uh, on top of that, like I said, my, my first time there, I saw a buddy TV and he's walking up the aisle and something was, going on and he like he reaches down he pushes the button he's like talking to his mic and i'm like wow <laughs> right. like wow <laughs> yeah you know so that's uh you know it's it's something now does the earpiece go eye. into the walkie talkie yes yeah, so, yeah. so ours are it's a two pin so if, if you're looking at starting a uh, a team you have to make sure that you know i'll, I'll kind of get it close you can see the two yeah, pins perfect. that go in mm-hmm. so uh you know, there's different, you have to be careful. So like whenever you order like your earpieces, there's actually, um, two pins that have, you know, they have like fatter ends, so it won't be compatible across. So you have to make sure that you look at the, to make sure that the, the compatibility with the earpiece to the type of radio that you have, um, what you're holding is a, compatible yes. and it has the voice and the ear feature. Yes. Yeah. And it, so what, and what I do is when I get dressed in the morning, you know, I hop out of the shower, I get my scapular on, and then, you know, I start, I actually run this wire through my shirt, and then uh, this piece that I talk into clips right on the, on the outside of my shirt, right. so if I need to get to it quickly, I can just push the button and talk. Now, with these, you need to make sure that you talk slow and you enunciate, because if you just start talking like we're talking here, 
it's going to sound like a big, like a mess of jumble. It's not going to make a lot of sense. And sometimes, you know, if you get into a stressful situation, you might do that. So the biggest thing is make sure you stay calm and talk slow and concise and clear so that your buddy can hear you um, with his earpiece. Because, well. you know, let's just imagine a van pulls in the parking lot and a bunch of uh, ladies get out in the handmade handmaiden outfit. There's a guy out in the parking lot. I've seen him out in the parking lot. He's going to just say, hey, team, we got a bunch of handmaidens getting out of van right now. They're going to start coming to the church. Right. And that's, that's just right. going to summon people to say, hey, OK, let's go out and talk to these people. Why are you here? Why are you dressed like this? Right. Yep. That's They're right. Because like in L.A., they should not even have gotten into the church. They should have never. Nobody should ever be able to just get inside of a church. It's especially when they're dressed uh, up. Yeah. I mean, they came fully full. I mean, they were I mean, they were in full garb. I mean, they were ready to go. I mean, these it, it, I mean, guys, these people are organized. Yes. They're using social media. They're, you know, they're they're utilizing every resource, technology based, and it's just really saddening that somebody could even enter inside of a church so easily. It it angers me. It frustrates me. It makes me fear for my family's safety, and uh, you know that's why I do what I do. Yep. Yep. Okay. So uh, so what so else on supplies? On, so what else on supplies? So uh, for me, a good sturdy belt. Mm. So this is this is my uh, this is my five eleven tactical belt here. Yep. And uh, on that, stuff, yep. Yep. So I, I love this belt. It's it's Velcro, so it's, it's a hardcore Velcro. It doesn't you know it, it, land, it cinches down. So you know you know depending on what you may or may not have on your belt, you yeah. know. It, <laughs> it, and just for everybody know, watching, <laughs> Joey and I are in Texas, so uh, we'll just let you. Uh, let your mind wander on what may or may not be on the heavy, strong belts. Exactly. So, you know, you want to make sure that that, um, that that belt is going to sustain what you have. So for me, you know, one of the things that I have on my belt is going to be my radio. Another thing mm-hmm. is my pocket knife. You know, I carry mm-hmm. pocket knife everywhere that I go. It's, it's just a practical thing in Absolutely. a car accident. I need to cut my safety belt off whip it out and cut off my safety yeah. belt and men if you go um, to then, mass always have a rosary in your pocket and always have a pocket knife just do yep. it <laughs> just do it i got my rosary right here yep. yeah exactly you know, i have one of these hardcore heavy duty rosaries so at the end of the day i can always whack somebody in the Same head here. Had to, or pull so. a child out of a <laughs> pull a child out of a well with it so strong <laughs> yeah the paracord is super strong yep. so uh yeah so you know and then um i want to don't carry too much stuff mm-hmm. okay like we, have a, we have a funny term the bat belt. yeah we, we have a funny term for it you know i won't use it here but you know i, I know my, <laughs> my buddy abel's probably laughing right i think now, i know but, uh, i think i know what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you want to carry stuff that's that's adequate for you to handle any sort of situation but you don't want to have too much on you because there actually is a liability issue if you have too much of a certain thing on you, be like, whoa, hey, this guy was loaded for bear. He was looking for a conflict. Right now, you could create. Now you can create a legal issue for yourself. So carry what you need. Again, most let's say it's the most extreme incident. It's going to be over in a matter of seconds. Yes, in a matter of second. In the most extreme instances where people where there's a loss of life, it's going to be over in a matter of seconds. So yeah, you sent me you a channel, <laughs> Joey. Uh, what was the name of the channel that had those fast situations on it? Um. Oh goodness. Tactical well, something. Um, uh, active self protection. Active, so active self. Yeah, I mean, you go to that website on YouTube, and these are real scenarios. So don't be letting your kids watch them. Like, there's some, no. there's people getting shot on these things. But you watch this and you realize how very quick things go from that's weird to oh my, someone just got shot. Yes. Within yes. Within less than a second or two. Yeah, less than a second. Yeah. I mean, less than a second. I mean, I I mean, there's guys that can draw draw something, a weapon out in a quarter of a section, a quarter of a yeah. second. You know, and uh so you you know, again, and it's usually over in just a matter of seconds. And it's really just who takes action first and who can, you know, make the right move to get the advantage in in a bad situation to take advantage and then, you know, ultimately win that win that conflict. So, you know, um, you know, 
and we'll get a little bit more into the training part of it here in a second. But uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, again, you, you want to have something that's adequate, but it's not too much. You know, you don't need to have, you know, lasers and, you know, you know, big mag lights. And right. You don't need that. You know, you need just enough to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, the other big part of it is to dress professionally. You know, don't, right. don't, you know, you can't, you know, your, your safety team guys need to be, you know, we have a thing, wear jackets, obviously for some of them. For some reasons, you know, obvious, obvious reasons, but you know, wear a nice jacket. You're there to you're shine there your shoes, to shine your shoes up. I'm an ex military guy, so yeah. having a nice sign on my shoes is a, is a real important deal for me. Um, you know, and uh, you know, you want to look the part. You know, when you think about when you see the Secret Service, those guys, I mean, they are they're square they're identical, away. yeah, they're all identical, yeah, they're identical, yeah, they're all identical, you know. And then if you want to. You know, if you're outside and you have yourself a good pair of uh, polarized sunglasses and what and what that does is that actually helps. So I know when, when I put my glasses on like during processions and stuff, I'm my head might be pointing this way, but I'm actually looking at what's happening that way or that way. Right. You know, so, you know, without having to move my head too much. So um, that pretty much wraps up uh, um, the, the, the things that you're going to need. Oh, also, one important thing is to get with your diocese. We have a I know in our diocese, we have diocese incident reports. So if something happens the bishop has the courtesy of knowing, Hey, something happened here. Right. And, and, and that's, and, and, and guys think about it this way. This is a way where you can be like, Hey, Bishop, you know, this, this happened and then this happened and this happened. Hey, we need a safety team here. There's mm-hmm. documented evidence of issues. And we, you know, we need a safety team. We need a group of men. that are going to, you know, look after the flock, you know, cause if not, blood's going to be on somebody's hands. Yeah. If I was a Bishop, I certainly want to show up to judgment with, you know, blood of my, uh, my flock walk on my hands knowing that I could have done something and I did nothing, yeah. you know? So, uh, that pretty much wraps up that section. The next section is going to be, I just call it train, train, train. Uh, um, there needs to be at minimum semi-annual training. If you, if possible, quarterly training, uh, for our military guys, we call them safety stand downs, you know? And, uh, you know, so that's a time where you're going to get together and it's not just, so much just okay i'm going to be wrestling with each other no it's sitting down and discussing okay what are the issues we face okay we have a lot of beggars here you know what are security issues that we've seen okay you know well, we have a kid that's getting tangled up into these thorn bushes so we need to probably put something around that it's more than just you know oh prepare for the worst possible scenario this isn't rambo you know this isn't you know afghanistan or iraq you know this is you know, just general safety stuff. Um, you're also going to, um, I know for our team is we have something we've implemented in is going to be where we have, you know, once a year where we're going to have CPR certification training. So all of our guys are going to be able to perform CPR. Yep. You know, we're going to have a, a, a licensed person come in and do that um, because medical is the number one most commonly thing that you're going to deal with. I know for it has been for us. Yeah. Um, and then you can also look at doing various scenario training. So here just recently we had a scenario training where it probably went on for a good two or three hours. And we had like eight different scenarios. We had police officers from our local uh, police department come in. They evaluated us. They looked at us. They, they, what could you have done better? Or, Hey, you were outside of the law on this, or you would have done Perfect. that. You could have been, you know, so those now, guys need to pay for. No, we didn't pay a single really? thing from they, they, they came out and they just, because our police officers, they are so busy. It makes their job easier having a group of guys that, hey, at that parish, those guys are squared away. They're taken care of. It's a hard target. So that's one less place that I have to really focus on during my daily patrols. Those guys are squared away. You know, so they, 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 they volunteered their off time to come out into. And again, it's having that relationship. You know, we, we have those off duty officers that come in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's minimal. It doesn't cost a lot to have an officer there on your, on your property, but you develop a good relationship with these guys. And these guys aren't Catholic, but I mean, the, they have the utmost respect for you. Hey, Joey, where do you need me at? Do you need me to do this? Do you need me to do that? These guys are just fully engaged and they're not just sitting in their car, just hanging out. No, they don't do that. They're very active. They patrol every few minutes and they're moving around in the parking lot and making sure that everything's good. Yeah. You know, another scenario, I'm always saying, take up space. We Catholics need to be in the public square. We don't need to be all hiding in our churches. We need to have Eucharistic processions. We need to have Marian processions. We need to be having Eucharistic conferences, all these things. And I think maybe one reason 
that we don't have as many processions is there maybe is a fear about, you know, we don't live in, you know, a neighborhood like in Boston, that's 101% Catholic, you know, now our neighborhoods, you know, especially where our church is, you know, you got the Waffle House and you got the Whataburger and the hotel, and, you know, like there's some, there's, there's some things going on there. If a priest knew I have a couple of police officers and 25 trained men with me on the procession around the Eucharist, around the statue really, around me, around the altar service and all that, that is going to promote taking up space liturgically in your community. I'm sure y'all train that. I've seen y'all out with processions. Big yes, part of it. Yeah, because I mean, you're vulnerable yeah, now. You're not in a church. You're on a street yes. or a sidewalk. Yep. Yes, I mean, our our uh, we have a uh, we have a great relationship with our uh, our sister parish. It's a Byzantine church, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we have a uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe festival with them, and we process from our church. That's that's about about it's probably at least a good two miles away. Yeah. And that whole time, you know, you're vulnerable, but guess what? We have, you know, 40, 50 guys that are just, they're ready to go. They're, some of them are in plain clothes. Some guys are obviously visible. They're on duty, but we have a bunch of guys that are just, they're, they're everywhere. And, you know, they're constantly, you know, they're looking around and they're checking their surroundings. So, you know, that, again, that's going to dissuade anybody from like, eh, let's, let's go poke with those Catholics. But then the, our, our priests, I, I, I hope, and I, I'm pretty confident, I feel confident they feel very safe with, with our team. So uh, additional uh, scenarios you can train for. Again, like I said, the medical is like the most common, you know, suspicious people. Um, again, we're in a high traffic area, so we, we, we do get uh, suspicious people. Um, the other big thing is... Uh, is How does that uh, work, by the way? I mean, I, I know I've been a part of it and I've seen it, but someone in the parking lot says, hey, suspicious person in blue jeans walking in right about now. And that just the whole team yes. kind of knows. Is that how, how it rolls out? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, without giving too much out. Uh, so w when somebody, we have, the, the, again, it goes back to that saying, you see something, you say something. Yep. And I always told the guys like, look, if you see something, if it, if it, if you hear, it tells you like something's weird, yeah. it probably is weird. Yeah. Say yeah. something. And, uh, so, you know, just having a good set of eyes and we do as, as soon as we hear that, I promise if you're inside of our church, you'll know who's probably undercover because you'll see their heads pop up. Yeah. They, 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 they have their earpieces in. I mean, they're, they're there at mass and they're praying the mass, but if they hear something. Hey, there's a suspicious person. You'll just see this. You'll see about 10 of those who do that. Okay. You know, and, and you'll see some guys get up and walk away to go find out Come what's going back. on. And it's, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll all go filter to the back. And our thing is protect the door at all costs. Okay. That's, that's our deal. The We're going to protect that door and we don't want them coming inside the church. And we will shadow those people. If we, we know that, like, hey, we don't know this guy, you know, um, you know, we, we do searches on, you know, sex, sex offenders, you know, pedophiles that are in the area. So, we, you know, I kind of have. Do you know who they are? I, I, I know who they are. You know, I have yeah. a mental image of these guys. I go through and I look yeah. at their mug shots. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll you know, we'll uh, we'll respond and we'll we'll make it known that, hey, we're watching you. There's so is that sort of a uh, he's coming into the narthex and someone sort of stopped and says hey how's it how you doing today yes we we will introduce like ourselves that. hey are, are you new to hey are you are you new here right welcome and generally if they're up to no good they will very quickly turn around and make oh can i just use the restroom real quick and then okay. they're out the door and they're okay. gone you know and uh you know for us we have a co-op as well so we, we you know again we're a traditional community we have a lot of kids um, yeah. and we have to make sure that they're, that those kids are taken care of and they're secure, you know? So that's a, that's a big thing. Um, the other big thing you have to look out for as well, you want to train for is going to be domestic situations. Um, you, you, you will probably see those before you even see the most extreme version of things. And then, you know, lastly, protests, violent attacks, um, including, you know, deadly force, you know, if necessary, and you find a place to train. Uh, luckily we have a guy that has a good relationship with a, uh, um, with a shooting range. So if you wanted to do that, you wanted to practice with stuff like that, you could, um, you know, and our, I think our, one of our most fun things is we have, uh, Eduardo who started a, uh, he calls it the Santa Monica boxing club. Yes. And uh, you talk about a workout, you can, you can say whatever yeah. you want about boxers until, I mean, just shadow boxing. I mean, hitting nothing and you'll be pouring sweat. And then we recently introduced uh, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. I think they're on their second class right now. So um, that's a, 
uh, I, I tell you what, I can't stress enough, and I know you know this, is the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It, when it comes down to getting into a physical altercation, that method of martial arts is, to me, the best out there. Yeah. I mean, I, you can get somebody locked up, and I know you can speak more on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Joe Rogan says if you've done one year of jiu-jitsu, you are deadly, and he's not being rhetorical or funny. It's true. I mean, I, I've done over five years. I've competed. And the thing is, is once you get someone on the ground through takedowns, you can very easily, I mean, after you've trained for a few years, like I can destroy your ankle mm -hmm. within three seconds. I can destroy. Okay, we're just talking about jujitsu. You know, I mean, once you get someone on the ground, you can dislocate elbows, wrists, knees, ankles, uh, and there's chokeouts and all kinds of things. So, you know, just fighting isn't when you were in seventh grade, just exchanging haymakers you know that's usually that's right. when you're a real fight a real fight usually ends up on the ground and yep. so you have to know how to fight that's on the right. ground you know and just doing a ground and pound on someone's not always going to work out and always going to be available so yeah i think just a commercial here for men and women but men mainly to learn you know jocko willink said he was being interviewed and he said what does it mean to be a man jocko have you heard this one joey I haven't heard that one. Okay, so I, I, I let's see if I can remember it. He said, um, to be a father to a child, to know how to fight with deadly force, man versus man, and to have fought in and survived a war. That's what Jocko said. I remember listening to that, and I was like, well, I've only ever fathered a child and raised. <laughs> I haven't done that. That's when I got into like jujitsu. I was like, well, I'm not. I'm too old to be in a war, but you know, I do need to learn how to to truly fight and protect myself and and be dangerous. Though I never want to use it, but um, absolutely, yeah, it's just yeah, something. But, but, I think this would have been, you know, if you went back a hundred years, two hundred years, uh, and then all the way back to. Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, you know, men fought, men were dangerous. It was just assumed because people could come into your tribe. They could come into your town. They could, you know, I mean, just everybody had to have a certain level of skills and trained a little bit. So is that me or that's you? That's right. You know, uh, that, that's you, I think. That's... Hmm, I don't know where it's coming from. I'm not sure. So uh, can, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I, I can hear you. That was me. Sorry. Okay. okay. So uh, um, and, and, and with that being said, uh, one of the things we, we, we actually, this is a great piece of advice that, again, uh, uh, TV has, has always taught. It's been soft hands. You know, so if you are on a safety team and you get in a situation where you have, um, you know, protesters or people that are coming into your church right. or even just engaging with somebody who's suspicious is to have your hands up soft, not, you know, right. you know karate you know, karate kid style when I do Mr. Miyagi, you know, nice soft hands up here. So that way if something happens, you can maneuver quickly and defend yourself if necessary. Um, so that's a, uh, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because yes. And, and with the, and with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, you can wear out your opponent without, a coach. yeah, you can wear out your opponent. I actually practice on my 17 year old son, Dick football player. He's twice the size that I am, you know, and we yeah. did some little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I absolutely wore them out just a matter of just a minute, you know, so that's, that's a great I thing. Mean, to... I, you could give me a 300 pound guy mm -hmm. and I don't think he could in five minutes. I don't think if he's never trained anything, I don't think he could hurt me in five minutes and I would just wear him out. Yep. And I absolutely believe that. I, the, the, I know the great, or great you could video choke him out or mm -hmm. give him a Kimura and rip his shoulder. I mean, those are all things, yep. but you know, that's I, actually one thing that we should we should discuss here is a lot of these people want to be victims, especially in the anti FA yes. group. They actually want you to punch them or spit on them or spray something on them um, because this is part of their whole victim culture. Yes. So being able to safely detain people and remove them, as opposed to hitting, attacking, whatever to them, actually takes away what they really want. Which is victimhood. Yep. yep. Yeah. They 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 want to they want to elicit a response. That's what they want. They they want you to say because they they they're yeah. going to be recording you exactly. 
and and that and I think I think the thing for us as well is we we've actually utilized that as well as recording interactions. Mm-hmm. I had a guy that falsely accused me of something of saying something that I absolutely did not say, and uh, you know, luckily my pastor came and stuck up for me, and I had a witness there that was like he didn't say anything close to that, you know. Right. And uh, but again, I was at that point I was just protecting our Lord in the Eucharist, and you know, we had a report, and so we wanted to make sure that you know there was no desecration happening, yeah. You know? So, but uh, um, so yeah, that that covers pretty much that section. And then the uh, my next piece of advice is where to station your men. Uh, again, we've talked about it over and over already. The parking lot is your first. So I know in so in the uh, in Iraq in Baghdad, we had all of our most important general CIA's. They were in one central location. And around that location, there was rings of security that you had to get through. And they might get past one. They might get right. past two. I don't know of anybody ever getting past all. Of them. Yep. And so the parking lot's going to be your first and primary ring of security. The police officer and the guy that's roving um, the parking lot, not just standing out there, you know, not smoking a pipe. No, he needs to be walking around, you know, praying his rosary or whatever, you know. <laughs> we say that for after mass, you know, but yeah. he needs to be active. and needs to be alert. Um, burglaries, vandalisms, you know, those things happen, you know. So if you're if you're out moving around, they're going to have less of a chance of, of breaking into in, into a vehicle or something. Um, the vestibule, our vestibule is it, it's mostly glass, um, and so that's that's our that's our next layer of, of protection. Then inside the door, as soon as you walk in the door, we got somebody there, and then inside you want to just have strategic locations that if something like if the most extreme circumstance happened. You have a clear line of sight where you can take action, mm-hmm. and uh, so that's going to be the, uh, the those main things. And then, uh, so for us is during the consecration or during Holy Communion, we will station two guys, one on each side, and they're up there because again, that's when the priest is vulnerable. Right, he's holding the chalice, he's yeah. giving he he is focused on making yeah. sure that host gets into the mouth, and. That's what he's focused on. The altar server, he's there just assisting. So Father has those extra set of eyes on him, also on the people that are approaching. So if you see a guy that you don't know and he's doesn't look the part, he's not doing Catholic things, he's not signing himself during Mass, he's not doing the things that are Catholic that we recognize, or he just looks completely lost, you can keep an eye on him. That way, if he gets to the front and he tries to leap over the, the, the communion rail, you're right there. You're just a mere feet away, and you can take action. So those are some of the most important posts for us, um, it, you know, at least at our at our parish. And then uh, during uh, during you know, when you have VIP guests, you want to have extra guys on duty. And then during processions, yep. again, we we talked about that earlier. We have guys that are standing next to Father, a guy at the front, and a guy at the back. And their jobs is to be looking. Their their job is to be looking around and making sure that. You know, everything is on the up and up. And if you see something, you say something, you radio it out and we'll get it taken care of. And then um, the other big thing is to make sure that you have guys that are that will walk the building between masses that will look under pews, especially like uh, Christmas and Easter time. We, We get there, you know, three, four hours early before mass starts to do sweeps of the property. We check inside bushes under we look for just random boxes, backpacks, things like that laying around. Those are the things that we we do. And, uh, and I want to go back and touch something on the door. The door is so critical. That's that's my favorite post is the door. The things you're looking for, you're looking at people's waistbands. You're looking to see if they're kind of leaning to one side. They're walking with a limp. They're looking like they're carrying something heavy. I mean, I've, and I've had guys that come in with suitcases, but we have an airport nearby so I had a guy that literally came from the airport straight to Mass, and he's like, hey, can I leave my suitcase here? I'm like, yeah, let's take a quick look real quick. Like, hey, no problem. <laughs> you know, and he walked in, he went to Mass, and I looked after his luggage, and he came back and got it after Mass. But you mass looked in the luggage. Yeah, I, I asked him. I was like, hey, can you, do you mind if I take a look inside your luggage just real quick? He's like, oh, yeah, no problem. You know, yeah. hey, thanks. I appreciate it. You know, some guys may not be cooperative, but you could tell them, like, hey, you know, can you put this? Can we lock it up in another in another room somewhere? You know, that way it's out of the right. way and I don't want to hear where the parishioners are at. So it's just little common sense things like that, you know, but that door position, you know, it's like I might have to open that door 500 times, but that's 500 times that I can look a person. OK, do they have anything? Does it look anything weird? You know, we had a guy that left one time. And he came back with an obvious knife in his pocket. And, uh, you know, we were like I was able to, to handle that situation and make sure that he didn't approach somebody. And we kept a close eye on him, you know, and then uh, again, you know. 
there's always an on-duty guard by having security cameras. Having security cameras around your parish, near the entrances, the exits, when there's a storage facility on site, have one near there, and have them inside the church. You know, we've been able to identify people by just, you know, hey, this guy was acting weird. We can pull a security video. And uh, there's layers to that. You know, your father has to authorize, okay, let's look at the video. And, and it's then, a deterrent. Um, and, and it is. It's a deterrent. You, you know, a guy comes camera. in, he wants to start some problem. He looks around, he sees three or four video cameras. He's like, yeah, I'm already, I'm already captured on here. I'm yep, not going to do my, activated. I'm not going to do my stupid plan. Exactly. You know, those, those, those cameras are, they're 24 seven guards. And, and, know, and I'd also like to, because of what happened with the tabernacle, by the way, if your tabernacle is not bolted into marble or into the structure of your church, you're wrong. You need yeah. to be horse whipped in a way. I don't, maybe that's too harsh. I don't know. The tabernacle has to be secure, but also all shrines, statues, tabernacles, all focal points, devotional focal points should have a camera on them. Yep. If, if these people roll up on your church with a thing of spray paint, they're not going to spray paint the parking lot. They're going to spray paint that statue of our lady, the sacred heart, St. Joseph, if they get in the church, they're going to attack the altar and the tabernacle. That's Put right. video cameras on all of it where you can see the video camera. So when someone comes up with some spray paint or a, or a big sledgehammer is going to jack up your statue of Our Lady, they'll think twice about it because they're on camera. Smile. Absolutely. Bolt, bolt those things down. Heavy-duty bolts. I mean, you're, you're just ask the faithful, hey, we need a collection. We need to do... Yeah. And we need to find a way to bolt down our, our tablet. I guarantee people are going to whip out the checkbook and be like, yeah, let's, oh, let's yeah, do it. Oh, yeah, all day long. Absolutely. I, mean, I know I would. Um, and then if you have any gates on your property, you want to have a guy there, you know, and that's uh, that pretty much covers that. that, that yeah, what about, uh, um, I've been thinking more, uh, there's another fraternity parish I attend sometimes. They have a, a courtyard, but they have gates. Mm -hmm. And usually on Sunday morning, they'll open only one part that's an in yes. and out which secures that whole area. And before I never really noticed it this past weekend, I did notice. Uh, I think that's important. I think we, you know, maybe investing in gates and checkpoints and barriers and all these kind of things, or so that a car can't just drive in the middle of your courtyard where there's like 600 people drinking coffee after mass. Like, I think yeah. we're living in a post-Christian society where we have to think about how do we secure these areas, both with foot traffic and also other mm -hmm. kind of traffic? Yeah, and that's something we did at our parish is uh, during the uh, the Easter Mass, once the procession came through and everybody was inside the, the area where we were, of course, because ours was outside, we had like a thousand yep. chairs out there. But I actually had the police officer park his SUV sideways. In front so of the... that created a physical barrier. And yep. then we got one of the rad trad vans, you know, the big 12 passenger yep. van. You got yep. one, you know, and we parked that one on the other side of it. It's like, you know, 8,600 pounds of, you know, right. of, of vehicle. Mm -hmm. And and that, that's going to prevent somebody going, hey, I'm going to drive in here and just mow everybody over. You know, it's just little you, you got to be able to think tactically, you know, practically, tactically, and then just make little adjustments. And just like I said, just communicate things with your pastor and say, hey, father, I have an idea. It's going to make sure everybody's safe. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna, we can save yeah. literally a thousand lives by just simply parking, moving a couple of vehicles. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes perfect so, sense. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so how uh, can... We've, we've gone a good time here. I'm going to put the email up on the screen here. Yes. So people, here it is. It is Kustos, which is Guardian, Guardians. Is it Kustos OS or US? C-U-S-T, it's C-U-S-T-O-S. Good, okay, plural, Kustos yeah. Guardians, 1571, the year of Lepanto, Battle of Lepanto, protonmail.com. Now, Joe, you're going to get a lot of emails. Your yes. team, you're going to get a lot of emails because people, I want you, if you're interested and you need help, resources, advice, email them at kustos1571 at protonmail.com. Yeah, absolutely. And then here's the thing. You need to clear it with your pastor and make sure that he's okay with it. And if he's okay with starting. A Maybe send him this video. Yeah, send them the video again. And, and, and like I said, it, it's not just about the most extreme circumstance. It's the medical. It's the other. Right. 15,000 protecting things kids happen. going to, I mean, making sure when kids go to the bathroom, they're with an adult, you know, safe yeah, and, and, that, and, and, and yeah. enforcing safe environment standards around the church. Yep. And I know at our parish, if you're under the age of 13, you can't go by yourself. That's right. 
you know, you have to go. We will send you back to your seat to go get your mom or your dad. Yep. Take them, take them to the restroom. You know, yep. so yeah. So those, those, I think those, that that covers pretty much the bulk of uh, what we had to cover. You know, and uh, you know, and there's a video on the Marshall Tactical Defense. It's called the uh, the Cycles of a Terrorist Attack. That is pretty much the cycle of anybody who's going to come after your parish. Let's say worst case scenario protesting. That cycle is what they're going to do. They're going to survey you. They're going to come onto your property. They're going to try and actually do surveillance inside your property. Right. Um, so, you know, no, no, if you will memorize that, you know, it's not very much. You can actually help prevent something bad from happening at your parish. Good. And that is, and that channel is linked here on YouTube below this video. Yes. So, well, great. Well, uh, Joey, thank you for all that you do for our family and our parish and protecting and our priests and the Eucharist and the whole team. I've been impressed for it for years, you know, and all this started coming up over the weekend with people saying, we're going to burn your Eucharist. And, you know, they firebombed. Do I have a picture of that? They firebombed a pro-life facility in Wisconsin uh, with Molotov cocktails. I mean, they're, and it said, actually, I got to show this. I got to show this. It says if abortion isn't, what they say? Now, here it is. They said, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. That's what they said. And, and then here is the office, the, the, the facilities that they firebombed. You can say the damage isn't like tear it down permanent, but it's pretty nasty. So, and they spray paint. If a, if a words aren't safe, then you aren't either. So this is violence. This is threatening us. This is them taking up space against us. We need to take up space back in the public place through our sacraments and sanctity. And then we must be active, proactive in protecting our churches, our priests, our Eucharist, our statues, our precious children, our wives, our elderly. We must be doing it because if something go bad goes down, like you said, the blood's on somebody's hands. On somebody's hands. That's don't want it on right. mine. I don't want to go <clears> to the pearly gates. Do, yeah. Saying, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I changed my Twitter handle. My, my Twitter thing, I was like, not on my watch. Yeah. Will not happen yeah. on my watch. I will absolutely do something. We'll and do just, what like I said, we just can. do what we can when we can. And like I said, just stay calm, try to de escalate, control your breathing, and be in a state of grace. Or, hey, if you're not in a state of grace, there's no. Guar more guaranteed way to get into heaven than to uh, lay down your life for yep. the uh, for, for God and his holy church. So. Yes. Amen to that. All right. Well, let's pray a Hail Mary for our continued safety uh, and that we can get dozens, hundreds of more teams so that people know, oh, you can't mess with Catholic churches. They got that. They got everything down on lock. You don't want right. you don't want to go and spray paint or smash a Catholic statue. You don't want to go into their churches. There's all these guys with earpieces and that's what's up. All right, let's pray a Hail Mary. Ave Maria. Oremus. You want to say the second half, Joey? I sure will. All right. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora por nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortris nostre. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Joey, thanks so much. I also encourage you all to follow Joey on Twitter. You can follow him at Olivo Joey. It's up in the top right corner. Thanks for all your, your wisdom, your prudence on this. I hope people start to get organized, ask the questions, maybe reach out over at the email on the screen there, kustos1571 at protonmail.com. It's also linked below this as well as the channel. And uh, let's, let's make 2022 this year the year in which we all got serious about safety to protect ourselves and to protect Absolutely. the liturgy and the host and the priest. Let's do it. Viva Cristo Rey. The, yeah, Viva Cristo the, the, the culture, our society is not doesn't look like it's going to be totally wholesome this year. So let's be proactive. Let's think about it. Let's be prepared. All right. Thanks, for everybody, for watching. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up like for this video. If you're on Facebook, give it a like. If you're on Twitter, give it a like. You can also listen to this podcast audio only on Spotify. It's syndicated on Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, everywhere podcasts are. Please share it. Share this video. People need to see this info. I really do hope hundreds of teams start, and that needs 
to be made aware. So share it and subscribe here. Subscribe over at the, uh, it's a Marshall Tactical. What is it again, Joey? Marshall Tactical Defense. Marshall Tactical Defense. Link is below the show. And uh, make sure you're praying that rosary every day. Our Lady is our mother. She'll protect us and hide us under her mantle. Make sure you're praying the rosary every day or you're not on the team. Anything you want to say at the end? Uh, no, uh, just uh, stay safe out there, guys. Uh, make sure that you uh, get involved with like USCCA, which will give you insurance coverage and access to attorneys in the event something bad were to happen. Uh, get with them as well, and uh, it doesn't cost very much at all to, uh, to have that protection. Good, good. All right, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth, so go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed, and Joey, thanks for being on today. Appreciate you. Thank you.